Natasha. Debbie. Show. The show. <laughs> Welcome to it. <laughs> Just two patriotic girls. Learning about the world. So please, don't take us the wrong way. Hi, welcome to the Natasha and Debbie show. I want to firstly thank anyone that tuned in on Friday. Honestly, we're recording this before Friday. Well, kind of like an hour before uh -huh. my short film debuts. <clears throat> so I just want to give a super huge thank you to anyone who has already watched it. Uh, my short film debut. Mm -hmm. And I really, hope, I really hope you liked it. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't watched it, please go watch it. And uh, so thank you for your support to anyone, um, again, who's watched the video. Hopefully more than 10 people have watched it at this point. I think a lot more than 10 people have I watched it. I don't know. I don't know. And also, tomorrow, Monday, is a special day. Uh -huh. Why? It is... Magic Monday! I want to be able to pull like a rabbit out of a hat. I know. Or throw some confetti. And then we have to clean it up. I know. That's We're why not we don't do that. that. <laughs> but yeah, we have a Magic Monday tomorrow. And if you don't already know, it's this very special Magic Monday here on the Natasha and... Debbie, show. 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 Yeah. How many people you said show at the same time we did? We're so tacky. <laughs> um, but that is uh, tomorrow's episode on Magic Monday is mm -hmm. a special sneak peek into an episode we did back in October for Patreon. It's a special Patreon only episode that mm -hmm. our patrons agreed to allow us to share with the world. And um, it is on a place here in Cincinnati. Uh -huh. And we took, a, we took them out and we uh, gave a little history. And hope that you'll tune in for that. Um, we've got a lot of people wanting to see Cincinnati content, so we'll find out how much of how much we really want to see it. That's right. And don't forget, every Monday in December is Magic Magic Monday because it's December. That's right. <laughs> and also, you never know when we're going to have any other uploads, so make sure you have your notification bells on. True, true. Also, please, if you don't mind, like button, subscribe if you want to. All right, I don't want to mess around anymore. I nope. want to get into this because I'm dying to see this. So, mm -hmm. one of my favorite places in the UK that we saw, and it was like one of the first travel videos we did, so it was a while back. Mm -hmm. I'm doing creepy fingers. <laughs> it was the Cotswolds. And if you've watched our show, you know I fell in love with the Cotswolds. You sure did. But that's the only video we ever watched on the Cotswolds. Mm -hmm. Only one. And it wasn't even that long. Yeah, so we need to see more of the Cotswolds. I'm shocked we and... haven't. And this one's going to tell us 19 best things to do in the Cotswolds. We don't even know what there is to do there other than look at the pretty other stuff. Other than walk around and, and go hold your jaw up like, <laughs> this place is too amazing. And it also says, plus 13 best Cotswold villages you must see. And I agree. I must see them. Yes, we must. And I don't really remember what we did see. I just know it was all really cool and pretty mm -hmm. and awesome. And I loved it. So uh, we'll see. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm worried because... I'm going to fall in love more, I think, and it's going to be a problem. We probably will. Mm. So it's time, guys. We're going to finally look at the Cotswolds more thoroughly, I'm hoping. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've never, like I said, known what there is to do there. So let's find that out together. And uh, ooh, this is going to be fun. It's just so pretty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Huh. It's perfect. Yeah. Look at this. Okay, England, we get it. <laughs> Welcome to the Cotswolds. Wow. Located in southeast England, the Cotswolds is Southwest. home to charming golden villages, thatched cottages, deep pitched roofs topped with heavy stone tiles, wool churches, and. She says southeast. Southwest. Southwest. Mm. I knew that. <laughs> map women. That's right. We are the map women. We're the or women. She is. We're the or, women. And I guess. there's no map. <laughs> I'm going to stop talking now. And honey colored mansions sit amongst oh, rolling hills wow. and valleys and shallow streams. The Cotswolds is simply delightful. And in fact, in 1966, the Cotswolds was designated as an AONB or an Area of Outstanding Natural Beauty. Yeah. Hi, yeah. my name is Michelle. I'm the Intrepid Guide, Hi, your Michelle. guide to languages and travel. The Cotswolds span roughly 40 kilometers across and 140 kilometers long, from just south of Stratford upon Avon in the north oh, to okay. Bath in the south. Now, we're such a large area 
area to cover, it can be tricky to decide where to go. So join me as I take you to the most enchanting villages and points of interest as we travel from north to south throughout the Cotswolds. So without further ado, here are the absolute best things to do in the Cotswolds. Follow me. Look at things. Mm -hmm. Okay, we saw this village and I wanted to see more of it in the one video. I remember this one. <gasps> no! Did I miss wow. it? Wow. Oh, wait for it. Yes. That view. Mm -hmm. I want to be buried there in the ground on the road and just so I can. I want to be married there too. What do you get married again? Sure. We'll right get there? married there. Okay. Yeah. This is stupid pretty. That is. Come on, guys. You can't keep gorgeous. all this to yourselves. And we just learned in the gorgeous. one video we watched that Henry Ford tried to buy like a certain street. Uh -huh. Remember that? Yep. I can see why. You can't blame him. No. If I had the money, I'd try too. I would too. You guys would be like, no. <laughs> like, whatever. Come on, England. <laughs> Sorry. Castle Coombe is a fairy tale like English village and often called mm -hmm. the prettiest village in England. In the world, this maybe? medieval settlement has barely changed in 500 years. Nice. The village takes its name from the 12th century castle, which stood about 500 meters north of this area. The word coombe is an old English term for a short valley or a hollow in a hillside or coastline. In Castle Coombe, you'll find okay. Dower House dating from the late 17th century wow. and is now a grade two listed building. And in the heart of the village is the 14th century Market Cross, which was erected when the privilege to hold a weekly market in Castle Coombe was granted. The Market Cross stands where the three principal streets of the lower village converge. Wow. So also cool. here is St. Andrew's Church, which dates from the 13th century and houses a faceless clock, which is said to be one of the oldest working okay. she said clock okay <laughs> didn't hear the l on that one sorry clock natasha if you haven't been to the Cotswolds and you live in the united kingdom why have you get up and go make a big weekend plan come on yeah at least go there. visit you're much closer than we are mm -hmm. go if you've thought about going and you can go just, you'll just, find some place on this video for you to go to or just drive there just or take a bus <laughs> or whatever it is just Go. Sorry. Clocks in the country. <laughs> While it's difficult to be absolutely certain as to the origins of its name, there are several plausible explanations why it's called the Cotswolds. The most commonly accepted is that cot means a sheep enclosure and wolds means hills or rolling hills. So the Cotswolds literally means sheep enclosure in rolling hillsides. This is perhaps the Whoa. most plausible okay. explanation because it was here during the Middle Ages that they bred sheep known as the Cotswolds lion and it played a key role in establishing a prosperous wool trade across Europe. The most successful era of the wool trade was between 1250 and 1350 with much of the wool being sold to Italian merchants. Wealthy merchants and farmers at the time subsequently donated much of their earnings to finance churches, believing that their generosity would ensure a place for them in heaven. These churches are known as wool churches and are found throughout the Cotswolds. Wow. She's showing quite a few of the red telephone boxes and um, we know that those aren't really in use anymore. Are those or are they just mm. for aesthetics or are they maybe like a little library or something? Just curious. Mm -hmm. Let me know. Wow. Built in the 14th yes. century, Victorian designer William Morris described Bybury as the most beautiful village in England. The most famous view of Bybury is this row of 14th century cottages uh -huh. known as Arlington Row, That's the one originally I built as a monastic wool wow. store. Later in the 17th century, it was converted into a row of weavers' cottages. They stand at the foot of Awkward Hill, locally pronounced Ockrid Hill, and now belong to the it. National Trust. In the 1970s, oh. they merged some of the cottages oh. to provide more comfortable accommodation for the 21st century. At the east end of Bybury Village, you'll find the grade one listed St. Mary's with Gothic windows, Saxon elements surviving above the chancel arch and a 15th century timber ceiling. <gasps> wow. I want to be one of those birds <laughs> and live there. Burford? I don't think I said that right. Oh, come on, oh. the door. Burford is a beautiful old Cotswolds right? town. Just... Its high street gently slopes from the high walls where you have stunning views over the open countryside <coughs> down to the river Windrush. Burford was the site of a fortified what? ford in Anglo-Saxon times, Ooh, and the town grew to be an important crossroads and a very wealthy wool town. I'm dying here. Mm. Standing on two pillars is the Tudor timbered frame Tolsey building. Its primary function was to collect tolls from the market traders of the time. Located wow. on the corner of Sheep and Market Street, it meant Sheep. that it could ensure that no unauthorized access to the market was made and that everyone paid their tolls, hence the name Tolsey. 
Nowadays, okay. the top floor yeah. is used by a local council for its local meetings. Located right across the road from the Tolsey is the oldest pharmacy in England, which really? has existed oh, wow. here since 1734. Wow. Oh. Ah. Ah. Come ah. on. Mm. Look out. <laughs> Debbie, take me there. It just can't get... Buy me a house, Debbie. Every time it's uh, something prettier. The Coswell Perfumery. The cream tea. They wow. don't even like cream tea. Bought I don't know the is. is as picturesque it. as it sounds. Sorry. This riverside village is flanked by long, wide, lush greens lined with Jacobian and Georgian facades <gasps> made from honey-coloured Cotswold stone. The dial yes. house. Five low arch stone bridges cross the river Windrush, which flows through this charming village nicknamed I mean, the Venice of the Cotswolds. If you were a duck, I would go live in the Cotswolds. <laughs> I mean, you could be anywhere, but go live in the Cotswolds. Ducks can do that. They don't have to pay. I know. They mm. can live wherever they want to. Okay. And these ducks. Next life, I'm coming back as a duck. To choose the Cotswolds. Smart ducks. You have smart Very ducks. smart. And it's not difficult to see why. Whilst you're here, head over to the model village where what? you can see a one ninth scale replica what? of this beautiful Cotswold village. It was built between 1936 and 1940. What? And this mini village is a perfect reproduction of Borton on the Water at the time that it was created. What? Even wow. down to its shop fronts, gardens, trees, and even a tiny version of the river Windrush. That Other is highlights the thing include ever. the Birdland Park, home to over 500 birds, including mm. flamingos, pelicans, and pink. Wow. No one told us this. No, we definitely go in there. Duh. I love you, Bristol, but I'm gonna need more love uh, from you right now. Yeah. I still love Bristol. <laughs> I still love Bristol. But mm, this yeah, is this not is perfect. I normal. mean the birds oh my and gosh. Just every view that you look at. I'm about to throw up from how happy I am. I know. <laughs> that was a weird thing to say penguins and the Cotswolds Hi, Motoring please. Museum and Toy Collection where you can take a journey Whoa. through time as you explore the extensive collection of vintage cars yes, and see please. the original yeah. Brum from the children's TV series. I don't know what that is but okay. The idyllic twin villages of Upper and Lower Slaughter are a must-see and they hug the banks of the River Eye, also known as the Slaughter Brook or the Eye Brook. Now what makes the Slaughter so special is that they've remained completely unchanged for over a century. And the name of these two postcard perfect villages might postcard sound perfect. alarming at first, but it actually comes yeah. from the Anglo-Saxon word slotra, which means marshy place or muddy place. And it's a cognate yeah. of slow. Okay. It's, now, it's no longer that. that muddy mess that you may have imagined, but it's one of the best places in the Cotswolds to enjoy a romantic village scenery. So let's yeah. take a look around. One of the main sites to see oh, wow. here in Upper Slaughter is St. Peter's Church. Now there has been a church on this location since the 12th century. Of uh, and the building that you see today had was mainly restored in 1877. Oh, that's but inside, don't miss the 12th century carvings on the tower arch. Uh, there is also the Tudor brasses and the 17th century memorial. Now the St. Peter's Church is set in an incredibly beautiful location. So take your time to wander around the grounds and spot some of the idyllic vantage points from the churchyard. Okay. The village of Upper Slaughter straddles the River Eye, flowing between lush green banks crossed by quaint old bridges, just like this one here. Now, opposite one of these tiny bridges is a Ooh. Methodist church, which dates back to 1865, but it is now used as a pottery. The largest business in Upper Slaughter yeah, what is, is Lords of the Manor Hotel. This building oh. dates to 16. We could stay there. No, to hell with that. Um, are they hiring? <laughs> Go work there? Stay there. I want to work there. Okay. Um, look at that. that out too. I want to sit out there and have coffee. Have some tea. Coffee. Um, <laughs> be honest. That is so... I want to work there. That's nice. Seriously, if you seriously ask any American what they think of England, yeah, so this, this is what's in our brains. This is definitely... This is what's in our brains. pictures of our thoughts. Yeah, and it is... Oh, what? <laughs> I know. I just now heard that and I'm like... <laughs> Let me know if they're hiring, because um, the heck with this YouTube gig. I'm going to come work there and, <laughs> and, and live in around, well, not even live, but just be able to be there every day. Mm -hmm. This is awesome. And has been a hotel since the 1960s. The Slaughter okay. family purchased the manor from Henry VIII and was last occupied by Ferdinando Tracy Travell. Now, Travell's portrait still hangs in the first floor landing, and a coat of arms is Lucky. incorporated into the decoration of the drawing room fireplace. So, wow. why not spoil yourself That's and stay cool. here? Uh, if you can't afford to stay the night, then maybe Probably you can not. just stay for afternoon tea. Wow. I'd probably get an employee discount. <laughs> 
Wow. Lower Slaughter is the real gem of the two villages and it's here that the River Eye flows just below water level and snakes its way through this village of Honeystone Cotswold Cottages. Mm, so take a leisurely beautiful. stroll along the flowery footpaths as you take in the stunning surroundings and enjoy the slower country life. Lower Slaughter has been inhabited for over a thousand years and in fact in the Doomsday Book entry the village name was called Slostra. Located at the hmm. west end of Lower Slaughter is a 19th century flour mill which closed its doors in 1958. Attached That's to the cool. mill is a still working water wheel like and a tall chimney one which created additional yeah, steam power. The red brick chimney creates a bold contrast to the rest of the village with its honey coloured buildings made from traditional Cotswold stone. The mill was originally part of Lower Slaughter Manor, which what was built in 1658 what? for the High Sheriff of Gloucestershire. No. The manor is now a grand country house hotel where you can enjoy a luxurious mm. stay. Hi. No, go can, are they hotels? hiring? <laughs> <laughs> She's just going to work in every hotel. Are they hiring? I can work at the one on weekends, the other one on weekdays. Uh-huh. And um, there might be another hotel in this video. I'm probably get a job gonna... at, that per, at that pharmacy, maybe. Yeah. Been there forever. It's not like they're going out of business or anything. <laughs> um, job, job security. That's what matters at that place. That is true. Yeah. Now today the old mill is home to the Lower Slaughter Museum where you can learn about Ooh. the history of bread making and the internal workings of the mill. So make sure you head in when you come and visit Lower Slaughter. Definitely. What's that? That's cool. What's that? I love that stuff. Broadway. Oh, whoa. Oh. Holy crap. Here. Hi. Broadway is a large village and civil parish sometimes mad. referred to as the Jewel of the Cotswolds. Located at the foot of a steep escarpment, High Street Broadway is named for its chestnut-lined High Street and a wide thoroughfare that previously formed part of the wow. road linking London and Wales via Worcester. The High Street is still flanked by ex-coaching inns, honeycombed Cotswold limestone buildings, many dating from the 16th century, setting back behind their broad grass verges. Question. Can you get, I assume you can get coffee at any tea room. And is that frowned upon if you do? <laughs> just wanna, I just want to know. And also, no, I just want to know that right now. Each place we're looking at gets better and better. I know. I'm just it's annoying, away. isn't it? Yes. Behind me standing yeah. 1,024 feet above sea level is the Broadway Tower, an wow. iconic little folly castle built in 1798. The castle Jeez. was built for Lady Coventry between 1798 and 1799. Creepy. Now the tower was built on a beacon hill where beacons were lit on special occasions. And Lady Coventry wondered whether a beacon on this hill could be seen from her house in Worcester, which is about 20 miles away or 35 kilometers. Yeah. So she had, she sponsored for the construction of the folly to be, to be built to find out if she could indeed to see the castle and she could there are okay. incredible views on all sides of the tower but if you Build want to see a, a little bit more you can take the 71 steps up to the roof of the broadway tower for even more incredible wow. views Do they have an elevator <laughs> sir are you oh. kidding yeah i don't like that that thing's freaky the Rollwright stones are a complex of three Neolithic and Bronze Age megalithic monuments, each with their own specific purpose. During the period when the three monuments were erected, there was a continuous tradition of ritual behaviour on this sacred ground from between the 4th and the 2nd millennium BCE. The first to be constructed was the Whispering Knights, which date to early to middle Neolithic period, and it was likely to be used as a place of burial. This was followed by the King's Men, a stone circle which you see behind me, that was constructed in the late Neolithic or early day. Bronze Age era, and has a either a trade-based or a ritual connection. The third monument, the King's Stone, is a single monolith, although its construction has not been dated. Many archaeologists believe that it was a Bronze Age grave marker. Huh. What is that? Wow. Are you what? I've never heard of this castle. Have I? Wow. I don't think so. Peacock! Hmm. With a history spanning over a thousand years, Sudley Castle is home to grand banqueting Sudley? halls, 10 magnificent yes. award-winning gardens, making it one of the best attractions and definitely one of the best things to do here in the Cotswolds. Ready? I'm the Cotswolds, ready? Okay. I got peacocks. I got castles. I got all these cool sheep. I got deer. I got awesome streams and really old, cool awesomeness. And it's, I'm so beautiful. We get it, Cotswolds. <laughs> I got everything. They do seem to have everything. Right this is not place. fair. <laughs> no. Mm. This place I know is going to be amazing. Ten different gardens. In this it. is too much That's to take in, cool. man, in one video. This should have been like a series of ten. <laughs>
Siddeley Castle has had many owners during its lifetime, awesome. including the last of King Henry VIII's wives, Catherine Parr, who really? lived and died at the castle, and was also yeah. frequented by four of England's queens. The centrepiece of Siddeley Castle is the Queen's Garden, so named because no fewer than four of England's Which queens, one? including Anne Boleyn, Catherine Parr, Lady Jane Grey, who was queen for nine days, and Elizabeth I, once walked upon the original Tudor Parterre. It oh, is wow. also the only private castle in England to have a queen buried within its grounds. That really? is, of course, Catherine Parr, who was the last of King Henry VIII's six wives and the only one who survived. Look at those hills. Oh, it's just annoying at this point. <laughs> like, okay. I'm just going to come stay in someone's house. Knock on the door. The no, really Church in? of St. Barnabas in this picturesque village of Snows Hill is also the filming location of where Bridget Jones got married. Turkey curry anyone? Never saw the movie, also sorry. located nearby is the Cotswolds Lavender Farm and the Snows Hill Manor, which is a Lavender Farm. century country house containing thousands of objects yep. from its previous owner, Whatever. Charles Paget Wade, who gave the house to the National Trust in 1951. And you can expect to see everything inside from old bicycles, toys, instruments, and even 26 suits of Japanese samurai armor what we'll have that's a variety <laughs> if anyone's planning on giving their house to anyone hi um <laughs> i'm available to take and receive yeah, very true if um, you're living in the cotswolds and you just need to get rid of your home mm -hmm. we are happy yeah. it's christmas season yes um we'll be happy to accept the gift <laughs> totally have to check it out i'm not well kidding at all <laughs> what are you talking about kidding oh wow come on the highest I'll town in the cotswolds hmm just one big garden. I know, it's just Ow. everywhere. Wow. What the? Oh, come on. You could fit in that. I'm getting mad. I know, <laughs> I'm mad too. Pretty. On the world is a charming and quintessentially English historic town mm. located in the heart of the Cotswolds. Once an ancient wool town, Stowe on the Wold is situated near the Fossway, which was an ancient Roman road that linked Exeter in the southwest to Lincoln in the northeast. Yeah. Stowe on the Wold's unusual oh. sounding name wow. isn't so strange once you break it down. Whoa. The during Saxon oh. times, what? Was was that? a sounding name isn't so strange See that once tree? you break it down. What? What's is happening that? here? And that is awesome. That came. Is that re that's real, isn't it? Yeah. It okay. Pretty stinking real to me. Is that an eviction uh, slip on the door there? <laughs> Get out. We're walking in. Um, do you have squatters right wow. there? Just kidding. That is I thought the door was was the tree. It kind of is. That is epic. I don't a, know yeah. what to think right now. That's incredible that the tree just kind of grew around it. I just want to go walk through the doorway now. Mm -hmm. Or just stay there. During Saxon times, it was believed that a missionary by the name of Edward lived as a hermit at a well located in the southern part of town. And over time, this gave rise to the town's first name, St. Edward's Stow or Holy Place. Yeah. The old English word stow means place, spot or locality. And the term wold simply means hill or rolling hill. So put together, stow the on the wold literally earlier. means holy mm. place on the hill. The heart of stow on the wold is its Jeez. large market square, once the center money. of the town's mm. wool trading pass, Sorry. which could hold up to 20,000 sheep ready for sale. Are they hiring? And today, market square sheep? is lined with wow. elegant buildings and a range of antique Book shops, shop. art galleries, and gift shops. After a spot of shopping, take your time to there wander we go. around There's the mines, your job. soaking in all the details of the town's past. Yeah. At one end stands Bunch. the town stocks, mm. which date from the 15th century, and they stand just right behind me. Of course, that's all And are those. shaded by a lovely old elm tree. At the opposite end of the square, you'll find the ancient market cross, which was erected as a symbolic reminder to traders of medieval times to deal honestly and fairly. Located on the mm -hmm. west side of the market square is the Crooked House, which was built in 1450. And yeah. on the southern end is the King's Arms, where Charles I is said to have stayed during his visit. Hmm. It was also here in Market Square that the last important battle of the Civil War took place. On the 21st of March 1646, the Parliamentary Army overwhelmed the Royalist Army, which resulted in them fleeing the field. They retreated back into the streets of Stow in what resulted in a bloody massacre and the eventual surrender. Hmm. The wounded were laid in Digbeth Street, and as the legend goes, ducks were seen swimming in the blood. Oh. And some even claim that that's how Digbeth Street got its name, after Duck Bath. In memory of those who fought and died at this time, you can see a memorial stone in St. Edward's Churchyard.
This grade one listed building is amongst the highest architectural category thanks to the buttresses, its stained glass windows and churchyard. But perhaps its most famous feature is this door that you see right behind me framed by two ancient yew trees. And it is said to be the inspiration for J.R.R. Tolkien's Doors into Moria featured in Lord of the Rings. So you go check it out when you come and visit. Lucy's team. Are they, are they hiring? Keep asking. Put this to anyone that has a business there. <laughs> seeking Try. a dog. Whoa, I want to eat that. Yeah. Yum. Uh, are they hiring? <laughs> That's awesome. That is a cool room. I want to stay there. I want to stay there too. I'll stay anywhere. The wool cottage. Called the Queen of the Cotswolds, Painswick is a gorgeous town of steeply winding streets with ancient buildings jostling for space. While you're here, don't miss taking a wander down Bisley Street, <laughs> flanked by mostly 14th century buildings, and here at St Mary's Church, where the spire dominates the village skyline. Take wow. your time to wander through the churchyard, where 99 yew trees surround a collection of 17th and 18th century table tombs. And as the legend goes, there are exactly 99 yew trees, and the devil himself brings death every time someone one tries to plant the 100th tree. Other attractions in Painswick include mm -hmm. the Rococo Garden, which okay. is a short walk from the centre. It was designed as a flamboyant garden in the mid 1700s and it is now home to a world renowned collection of snowdrops. Most royal village. Oh, I can see why. Wow. Um, where yeah. are, they, are they hiring claimed you? as the Cotswolds' <laughs> most royal village with the estates of Prince Charles and Princess Anne located nearby, Tetbury is a charming town full of medieval cottages, old townhouses and Georgian buildings. Tetbury is a historic gorgeous. town. With I was just wondering, so this video is two years old, obviously not King Charles at the time, but I was just wondering if the mm -hmm. royals ever lived there, something, sitting there thinking, why would you not? Right. You got the money and this place is epic. <laughs> and that's the sad part for me is, we would never have enough money to live in the Cotswolds, so it's just not realistic. Mm. But that also makes me angry. It does. But, you know, maybe... Uh, I'm sweating. Someone will uh, invite us to come stay with them in the Cotswolds. Only if we get to stay for like six months out of the year. Uh, we, we'll you trade know. you. I'll tell you what. I got your you deal. You can come here. We'll give you this house. house. Oh, that's a good deal. Six months here. You hook us up with six months there. They're going to be like, this is a crap deal. <laughs> <laughs> Many of the wool merchants' houses remaining the same as they were in the 16th and 17th centuries during the height surprised. of the town's prosperity from the wool trade. Hmm. For centuries, the Grade 1 listed 17th century market house has been the hub of the town and there are wow, markets that are cool. held here every Wednesday and Saturday. Really? Dominating Neat. the skyline of Tetbury is the parish church of St Mary's, with one of the tallest and most elegant spires that you'll find in the UK. The chipping, which is now a car park, means market, and for centuries was the site of the mop fairs, where local farmhands, labourers and domestic staff offered themselves for employment. The cobbled <laughs> chipping steps where I'm standing now is flanked by weavers' cottages, and they climb from Lower Tetbury to the chipping, wow. where you'll find Look some of the most That's iconic beautiful. views of the town. The police museum is located in the old courthouse, where you'll find the world-renowned Alex Nichols collection of handcuffs and restraints, together with Gloucester policing memorabilia. <laughs> And then you're like, <laughs> Wow. It's kind of cool to get a little aerial view. It's, it's different. I've never seen it like that no. before. Could be a plan the trees to grow exactly that way. I know, that way. Is one place in the Cotswolds, then this should be it. Chipping Camden is a town of Jacobian architecture, fascinating history and natural beauty, and lots of lovely tea houses and places to sleep and eat. And work. Chipping Camden is an Anglo-Saxon name, Camp means settlement, den means valley, and shipping refers to the market it was awarded. I love her information. Oh wow, look at all the That's puppies. Nice. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> when you visit Chipping, make sure you go to the Wool Church as well as visit the historic marketplace that dates all the way back to the 17th century. No problem, done. Mm. Whoa, look at that. Oh bridge. come on. I gotta have a picnic there. Are you kidding? Oh, I just got uh, one! Did we get to go there? <laughs> did we see this before? It's running together right now, I'm sorry if we have. Located I think we did. In Woodstock, Blenheim Palace is a stunning Baroque UNESCO World Heritage Site and one of Britain's greatest stately homes. 
Blenheim Palace was gifted by Queen Anne to John Churchill, Duke of Marlborough, in thanks for defeating the French at the 1704 Battle of Blenheim, a small everything. town in Bavaria. It's also the birthplace of Sir Winston Churchill, who was the grandson of the seventh Duke and the cousin of the ninth. Oh, we're doing a video Churchill on this was born now. here in Blenheim mm. Palace in 1874 and is buried in the parish church in Bladen, about one and a half miles south from here. Really? We're totally doing a video on this now. I've got to find one. Blenheim Palace is open to the public, so you must come and visit. Ooh. A few of the highlights include the Great Hall, featuring images of the First Duke, the State Dining Room, and the oh. magnificent Long Library. Try not to see too much, because I do want to do a video on it. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> it's not fair, though. I know. Not looking. Watch us not find a video, though. I know. And then we'll have to come back and watch us. Located in the extensive Minute. park grounds surrounding Blenheim Palace is a majestic 300-year-old cedar of Lebanon tree. Wow. Carrying oh. 55 feet tall and 20 feet in diameter. Other than that. It's known as the Harry Potter tree because this is yeah. where part of Order of the Phoenix was filmed. So if you're a Harry Potter fan, you must come and visit the park grounds at Blenheim Palace. Oh, come on. Jeez. The gardens are just gorgeous. Everything's gorgeous, Debbie. Yes. have been visiting Morton on Marsh for some 1700 years. This once important coaching station and principal market town is an excellent entry point when visiting the Cotswolds, thanks to its direct trains from London, Oxford and Worcester. Its high street is lined with several historically important buildings dating from the 17th and 18th centuries, including the White Hart Royal Hotel where King Charles took shelter during the Civil War. Also located like on Hall. the high street is the 16th century curfew tower. This is one of the oldest structures in Morton in Marsh and each night the bell was sounded up until 1860 to remind people of the risk of fire at night. Mm. It was also used as a lockup for local drunks and minor criminals for much <laughs> of its history. Fans of Lord of the Rings won't want to pass up having a pint at the Bell Inn. Now this is a traditional coaching inn considered to be the inspiration for the Prancing Pony in Middle Earth's most famous pub in J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings. In fact, the inn was presented with a special print by a branch of the J.R.R. Tolkien Society. Tolkien describes the pub as having three stories and an entrance via a courtyard and describes the fictional town of Bree as having very similar characteristics to Morton in Marsh. Hmm. Whoa. Wow. Freedom. Whatever. 56 acres, nice. Jefferson's Definitely want to go there. Whoa. What is that? Whoa, that's cool. Those cranberries. <laughs> Maybe they are. Whoa. Oh, come on. It's too much. I can't take this video no more. <coughs> wow. Oh, did someone gift that to somebody this else? Perfect. <coughs> this isn't normal. It's How not normal. How cool is that? Can you imagine this being your garden? No. What? Oh, the crap. Wow. That's pretty cool. Wow. <coughs> I love the curved conservatory. Oh. Uh, yeah. Considering the size of the Cotswolds, it's best to explore the region by car. Trains and local buses are great for moving between towns, but for accessing specific points in the countryside, it can be a real challenge. Back roads are quiet and wonderfully scenic, but in summer, the main roads can get busy with holiday traffic. The Cotswolds is the busiest in summer, mm -hmm. so traveling out of peak season is highly recommended. What's it like in Hotels Christmas? Hotels and B&Bs oh, also drop their gorgeous. prices, and car rental costs and fuel do lower a little bit. In autumn or fall, the Cotswolds is simply stunning with its colorful leaves. And in uh -huh. winter, you can look forward to cozy log fires and snow-covered gardens. Well, that's yeah. it from me. I hope you've enjoyed this guide to the best things to do in the Cotswolds. Yeah. I'm really thirsty. <laughs> yeah, from having your jaw open the whole time because everything was absolutely gorgeous, stunning beautiful we need to go and yes we will be driving and yes we probably will drive down your road if you live there because i'm going to drive down every single road there is <laughs> hmm. no we didn't see it from this angle natasha let's go i knew you weren't done yet i'll be knocking at every door 
you watch our YouTube show? Do you know me? Are you hiring? Do you? <laughs> 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 Do you know me and are you hiring? Will you pay me for it? Wait, what is it? I'm going to stop talking now. Take over again. You're doing good there. No, I want to know what that looks like in Christmas. Do lights get put mm. outside? Y'all do that in the UK that much? Like on houses and stuff? Mm. Interesting. I don't know. I mean, I, I just don't know. It's the question. Other but, than like at the markets and the... Yeah, you know, that's what I'm saying. Like on like, your homes. Yeah, on your actual homes. And oh, then I, I don't... Oh, yeah. I asked something you want to know too. <laughs> um, I mean, again, if you think about people that live in like brownstones here, they don't. So that's why I wanted to know. True. Um, this was more than I ever expected to see. Um, she also did the Bristol video too. Mm -hmm. So, um, all the tea shops, blah. candy, shopping. You don't like tea. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna walk in there and um, have something, have a snack. Ha have a snack. Yep. You're gonna have all the sugary stuff. I just <laughs> want to visit, and um, yeah, I would totally, totally stay here for a few months out of the year easily if it was an mm -hmm. option. It's not an option, but it'd be nice if it was. And again, if you live here, I know we have some followers that do live in the Cotswolds. Mm -hmm. Where exactly do you live? And we'd we like your to actual trade homes for six months. <laughs> Let us know. Let's talk. If you guys liked this episode, please hit the like button. Consider subscribing to our channel because we love the UK. Yes, and we do. this is why. <laughs> this is exact. It, it's a part, not exactly why. Part it's of part why. of why. Yeah, it's a big part of why. Though, yes, let's just be is. honest. I mean, if you if you watch this and you don't think this place is perfectly beautiful in every way possible, mm. you don't have a soul. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else to say. But thanks for watching, guys. We appreciate you. Hopefully, we'll see you tomorrow on our special Patreon for uh -huh. YouTube, well, giving it to YouTube, gifting it, episode. Magic Monday, don't forget. It's gonna look like crap compared to this video now. <laughs> <laughs> Should never play on this out this way. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next episode. Until tomorrow, love like jazz. Be as strong as Tyson. Bye, friends. Bye.